YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. First and foremost, guys, I have to apologize. I have not been posting the amount of content that I typically would be posting. I've had a lot of stuff going on from Let's Fish TV, filming episodes, traveling and fishing the Bassmaster Opens. It's just been crazy busy. So I do have, I'm at Ross Barnett right now, but once I get done with this event, I'll have a couple of TV shows but I'll have some time off and be able to film a bunch of content for you guys. So just bear with me. Got some cool stuff to, coming down the pipe that I'm really, really excited about. But guys, today I have a really cool video for you. You know, and it's relevant to right now. You know, when fishing pressure's high, you know, the fish are trying to spawn, have spawn, post spawn, every other kind of spawn that there is. The other thing that happens right now is there's a lot of pressure. You got a lot of boats on the water. Then It's a nice warm day. You've got boats everywhere. I mean, it's a Friday right now, and there was boats all over the lake. I actually think there might be a crappie tournament going on. I've seen so many crappie guys out here. But I want to tell you a little bit about fishing that shallow water when there is a lot of pressure to kind of give you a clue the next time you're on the water. So there's about four or five different things that I do when I'm fishing really shallow water. The very first thing that I do is I turn off every graph in the boat that's right you heard me right i don't have active target running i don't have any of my my graphs i don't have waypoints i don't have sonar i'm fishing that the oklahoma method you know the bradley hallman method where you don't really need the depth you just stick your rod down the water and see how deep it is and that's basically what i'm doing and you know we get so stuck on electronics sometimes you know we talk about graphs and active target and forward facing sonar and you got to have this and you got to have that but man when i'm fishing in one to two foot of water and i'm fishing fish that have gotten a lot of pressure that have boats going over them all the time that are really sensitive to sound and movement that is one thing that i like to turn off because that ping from every one of those transducers makes so much noise and in my opinion can absolutely scare fish away now might have somebody on there that says you don't know what you're talking about and maybe i don't but i always feel way more confident when i turn those graphs off and you know at the end of the day it's all about confidence anyway if you're confident what you're doing if you're confident what the your ability and where you're fishing and how you're fishing you're probably going to have just as much success but that's the first thing i do is turn my graphs off second thing is is i change the speed of my power poles from really fast to the slowest setting speed Yes, you heard that correctly. So yes, it does take a little bit longer for your power poles to drop. But the one thing about it is, is when I drop those poles really slow, it doesn't make near as much noise. I mean like a third of the noise. And I believe that stealth factor from those power poles is a very big benefit in my tape you know in my corner when targeting the shallow, spooky, spooky bass. I mean like guys. I'm, I'm sitting in a pocket right now filming, and just in the amount of time that I've been filming, I've literally seen five boats come in this pocket and fish the exact same spot. And it's actually a spot that I caught them on, I don't know, five, six years ago when I fished the open here. And so, I mean, I know there's fish around, but I've not seen a single guy catch a fish, and everyone I'm blazing in there, graphs on, and, and going real fast. The third thing that I do is slow down slow down yes you heard that right slow down turn your troll motor down turn it down to a two or a three and, and go as slow as you can and i'm not just saying slow in your troll motor but slow with your bait offering as well you would be so super surprised if you would slow down just a little bit how many extra bites you will get this time of year and i'm not just talking on ross barnett i'm talking about all over the country you know, we all, as bass fishermen, with all these crazy electronics and all these techniques and rods and reels, we have a tendency to just burn down the bank. And when these fish are spawning, that's not always the best practice. So slow down. So that's the third thing I do is slow way, way down. Turn that troll motor way down. Slow your presentations down. The other thing is, is I don't talk real loud. You know, you don't want to yell. You don't want to... You know, listen to music. Now, Hallman would absolutely disagree with me there because he's been jamming some music as of late. He got him a stereo put in his boat. 
And dude, like, I know when he's coming because he has some music blaring all the time. And, and maybe noise is just something that these fish are accustomed to and maybe it doesn't spook them. But to me, the more quiet I can be, you know, I don't slam lids in my boat. I, I try not to drop anything, you know, like, because all that stuff can spook these fish. And when you're talking a fish in a foot of water that may be only 20 feet away from you, it could really change the difference. You make the difference between getting a bite and not getting a bite. And this time of year, when you're talking five, six, seven, eight pound bass, like really big ones, they are even spookier right now than they are any other time of the year. Because as soon as they get off beds, they get real it's just weird they get really weird so like if those fish are on beds or getting off it just changes the way that they act and you have to really pay attention to that but the fifth thing and the final thing if i can tell you anything about being stealthy and paying attention to little bitty details is to watch the stuff around you pay attention to the cover around you because the quieter you are the stealthier you are the more activity is going to be going on around you. And the reason for, for it, for me, is I have my HydroWave blasting. So to me, I'll have that HydroWave on. I have it on a 30 second delay. And what I think it does is it'll mask the sound of the troll motor, mask the sound if I accidentally drop something in my boat or whatever. It activates the bait. You know, in a place like Ross Barnett, Rayburn, Salida, Gunnersville, you turn that HydroWave on in shallow water, you're going to immediately start noticing activity. You're going to see shad flickering, perch popping. You're going to have all this activity. And when that activity arises, nine times out of ten, if there's some bass around, they'll start feeding. You know, that's one of the biggest questions I get on the HydroWave is, does it just make the bass excited? Does it call the bass in? And that's not the case. A HydroWave, what it's designed to do is to activate the bait fish. If it activate, activates the bait fish, therefore the bass get a little bit more excited. They'll pay attention to what's around them. You know, just while I've been sitting here, I've seen five or six bass blow up. I've seen some gar rolling on shad. And nonstop, I've been hearing perch sucking up under those pads. If you don't have that HydroWave on, sometimes especially in the middle of the day like it is right now you're not going to see that activity you're not going to hear that activity and the fishing is going to be a little bit tougher now i'm not saying the hydrowave is the end all be all but it definitely helps activate that bait helps mask the sound of your boat and therefore my opinion help you get more bass or more bites from bass hopefully maybe crappie too i guess but more importantly, guys, more than anything, thank you so much for watching my shows. Thank you so much for watching all my YouTube videos. It means the world to me. And I actually met a subscriber today here in Mississippi, and he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Got out and shook his hand. He actually just had a hip replacement. So, guys, I do pay attention, and I'm so glad that y'all pay attention to me, too. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that sub button in the bottom right-hand corner. And I'm also posting one video every single day on my TikTok, so make sure you check that out as well. Guys, until next time, I'll see you in the water.